So what is a solar generator? <clears throat> well, a solar generator can run multiple appliances, DC and AC, 24 hours around the clock, using a variety of inputs such as solar, which would be the main purpose, but you could also charge it from other sources as well as a backup. And that's a solar generator. That's how I look at it. Unfortunately, there's a lot of these products on the market, and here's an example, and I'm not knocking a particular brand, but you can see it says right on there, portable solar generator. But unfortunately, it's not a solar generator, and I'm going to show you why. Now, I like this unit, and I, I'm not unhappy that I bought it, and I'm, I'm going to keep it. So I'm not giving it up, but I really do like this thing. But it's not a solar generator. So right now, the AC output is on. It has an actual switch. And throw on the DC outputs as well. And then to demonstrate that it's actually putting out power, I'm going to plug in a small fan right here. <clears throat> and the fan will come on. I'm going to show that it is on. And then I'm going to plug in uh, for the USB load, I'm going to plug in this USB flashlight. I kind of like these things. They're not protected, so you got to be careful with the not to overcharge them, but still like them I'll just use that for my USB you can see the glowing it's red it's glowing red so USB is on and then just to show the presence of 12 volts I'm plugging this voltmeter so it's putting out about 12 volts it's not a regulated output but that's okay it's just a three cell lithium-ion battery and you get about 12 volts it could be below or above 12 volts so everything's running AC output and DC output, it's kind of hard to show. And you can see right there, AC output, DC output, all this stuff is running. Now I have another cable over here, and this is the solar charging cable. And this cable has on the other end of it about 50 watts. You can see it right there of power. So it's solar panels, they're in the sun. It's about 11 a.m., and so I'm probably getting 30 watts or so right from this cable. So I'm going to plug this into the solar generator on the back. See if I can do that without looking. Okay. And as you can see, or you probably can't see, but everything is turned off. So you can see now this voltmeter is off. There's no power coming out. USB is off. There's no power. It just doesn't. Yep. Yeah, it's dead. So no power. It says charging. So it is charging. And if you look right here. We're getting 30 something watts coming in, so a little over 2 amps coming in. But nothing's working, nothing's running. The fan is off, it, so it just isn't working. So, unfortunately, this unit is not a solar generator. And again, I'm not knocking any particular brand or device. Some of these devices are sold as solar generators, but they aren't. They just aren't. They don't function as a solar generator. And that's unfortunate because a lot of people looking for these things are going to want to have power 24 hours around the clock and when they find out they can't charge it and use it at the same time that's going to be a big problem so the next thing I'm, is I'm going to show you uh, what does a solar generator actually do what does it actually look like um, now in in fairness I did modify this unit and you can actually look on the back and see it has extra charge jack let me let me actually put that by the camera this is the original charge input this is the one I put in so I've actually opened this unit up and modified it, and it was actually quite a bit of work. So I don't recommend doing this kind of modification, but it can be done. And I'll go ahead and show you this unit running as an actual solar generator because I modified it, not because it, it works that way out of the box. So just to be clear, this unit is not a portable solar generator unless you modify it internally by opening it up. So that's next. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and plug in a load. I'm going to use the AC because to me that's the most important. I really care about the AC up. So I'm going to plug in the fan once again. And the fan is running. And now I'm going to plug in my solar cable. But this time I'm going to plug it into the other jack that I put on the unit. And as you can see, the fan is still running. And I'm getting a charge, according to this meter, 9 watts. And I'm going to show the front. You can see it's still in output mode and it's charging. Now the problem is this is this could be a little dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. I more or less know what I'm doing. And I, I put my own charging circuit inside. And I tuned it to my parameters. It's basically doing a, 
a low end charge. It's not going to do a heavy charge. Just enough to keep this thing running. It charges it to about 70 to 80 percent and stops. It won't go beyond that. And that's for safety reasons. And as this is a three cell system, you wouldn't want to go over about four volts or so per cell, and that should be relatively safe. So that's a totally different ball game, and that's not what this video is about. What I want to do is show you what does an actual solar generator look like, how does it function, and what can you expect. But I wanted to show this unit because it's not a solar generator, and I wanted to show that I had to actually modify it to make it work as what it says on the top. So that's next. I'll, sh I'll show you an actual solar generator that's that way out of the box and does not require any modifications. Okay, so here's a real solar generator out of the box. It does not require modification. And this one I have not ever opened or modified. And so I'm going to go ahead and power it up and show you what a real solar generator should do. So first I'm going to turn on the AC output, which to me is the most important because you can run a lot of stuff with that. I'm going to plug in a hot glue gun. And you can see on the display, there we go, 50 watts, 60 watts. So it's putting out AC power. Now for the DC side, I'm going to use a USB power bank and the USB cable, the short USB cable here to hopefully draw enough power to keep the USB ports in operation. The USB ports will shut themselves off if there's not much power being drawn. That's, to, that's a power conservation technique. Let's turn on the USB. Okay, so just picture this as being a power bank, a cell phone, you know, anything that runs off a USB. So now the USB is running. Yep, it doesn't look like it'll shut itself off. Let's also plug in this USB flashlight. Charge that too. There we go. That's now glowing red. Now I don't have anything uh, offhand right now to plug in the DC ports, but it's the same thing. They'll all run. It doesn't matter. So now let's plug in a solar panel or a set of solar panels. This is a 2.1 millimeter plug with a set of solar panels outside. It's about 50 watts. And I'm using this adapter cable I temporarily made up. And now look at it. So now it's charging. Hot glue gun is still on. It's getting warm. And you can see right here on the display that everything is still in operation. In fact, there's a fan that just came on, so you can see a little icon there. So if you're like me and you're a solar enthusiast, electronics enthusiast, this display is all kinds of wind. Uh, it, it's really neat. So this is a real solar generator. Now this will run as far as I know indefinitely. Uh, it doesn't shut itself off as long as it has power in the battery and hasn't been run down. It'll keep right on running. And this will allow you to keep your lights on and potentially run your internet, uh, charge your phone, or do any other small things that you want to do. Now, this isn't going to run your whole house. This isn't going to run large appliances, but it'll get you by. So What's different about this device is that when I plugged in the solar panels, it didn't shut off the outputs. Now, another term for this might be pass-through charging. You got to be careful, though. There's a lot of terms out there. Some of them are used differently. So from the way I see it, a solar generator is just what you see here. That's a solar generator. And if it doesn't do this, then it's not a solar generator. It's a power bank. So the, the unit you saw earlier, the yellow and black one, in fact, I'll show it to you right here, this one, is a power bank. Of course I modified it. This is a power bank. Everybody calls this a USB power bank. And usually these things don't work um, if you're charging them. You can't use them while you're charging them. But this device here is continuing to work and it's fully functional while it's charging. So what you have is a portable off-grid system. It's very small. It's very easy to carry with you. And in a power outage, this may not run your whole house, but it would keep your power, uh, at least your minimum power, high enough to run small appliances and have some quality of life and it's better than nothing let's put it that way so if you buy a unit like this make sure you test it make sure it actually functions as a solar generator so what can you do with a solar generator well beyond what I just mentioned um, depending on how creative you are and how reasonable your expectations and how carefully you manage it even a small solar generator like this unit here can actually cook food uh, a unit like this could run a crock pot. If you have a large solar, larger solar panel, maybe at least 50 to 100 watts plugged in and the battery's full, a crock pot would run probably four hours off of this unit and still have power to spare and cook a meal, a good sized meal. Um, 
you can also use a solar generator like this to augment a gasoline generator. Who wants to listen to a gasoline generator running 24 hours around the clock? Nobody. And who wants to fire up a gasoline generator and change the oil every 24 hours so they can charge their cell phone? But a better option would be to take one of these units. If you don't, if you don't want solar panels, you don't want to put up with that. Yeah, some people don't want solar panels. They just they don't want to get involved. But they do like the idea of having backup power like this. You could use a gas generator, charge this thing all the way up, and then shut your gas generator off and go ahead and use this to power your appliances. So the only limitation that really the top three limitations with a unit like this, other than portability, um, this one doesn't weigh very much, but they may, I have one that weighs about 50 pounds. It's very, very large. It's not all that portable, really. Um, the top thing you need to look at if you're going to buy one of these is the size of the battery. That wins the day. So get the biggest battery you can possibly get. This one's only about two, 250 to 260 to 280, depending on how you look at it, uh, watt hours. So that's like a quarter of a kilowatt hour. That's very little power. Now with a solar panel feeding it all day, that extends the power output, um, but it's still not very big. So the battery size is number one, and number two would be the size of the inverter. This one only has about a 300 watt inverter, I think. And I wouldn't run it at 300 watts. I wouldn't go past 200 watts on this, and even not for very long. I would probably want to stay around 100 watts to 120 watts. So figure 50%, 150 watts. So you need to look at the size of the inverter and then the size of the solar input, which is another big deal because you want to be able to get as much power crammed in this thing as possible when you can. And those three things, I would say that th that's what you need to look for when you're shopping for a solar generator. Make sure it's actually a solar generator and then figure out what's the biggest battery you can get. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was of some help to you. The purpose was to show you the difference between a solar generator in name only, such as the one I showed you earlier, and a real solar generator, which you're looking at now in operation, that ironically is not, it's not labeled anywhere that it's a solar generator that I know of, but that's what it is. And to show you the difference between the two products and be able to differentiate between the two because it's not always clear which one. And that's rather important. If you're gonna buy something like this, it can be hundreds and hundreds of dollars in some cases over a thousand. So it, it's a good idea to know what its capabilities are before you buy. So I had a few ideas on other videos to record about solar generators. And I think top of the list would be a tear down, disassembly and repair of a solar generator. I've repaired several of these units in broken and not working condition, parts only basically. And I was able to get them running with varying degrees of success. I think that's probably something I'd be interested in recording. The other one would be a feedback to the industry video, uh, just showing different types of um, improvements that we like as customers. We're not consumers, we're producers, customers, end users. You know, what would we as end users or customers like to see? And for me, the top of the list uh, would be a better display. I want to know how much power is going in, how much power is going out, and how much power is in the battery at that time. A lot of the displays on these units are not, they're not very good. They don't give you enough information. Um, and so that, that would be an example feedback to the industry. Why not put better displays? Why not have replaceable batteries? Why not a modular design so you can replace parts? Maybe the inverter blows up, replace the inverter without voiding your warranty and save yourself a lot of money. Why not offering accessories like a 12 volt oven, to toaster oven or a 12 volt crock pot so that you can cook small meals off the grid in a grid down scenario. So that would be an interesting topic. And then third, also showing some actual practical hands-on applications that you can use these solar generators for. And I plan to do that at some point, probably trying to cook a meal while recording the entire thing would be, that'd make an interesting video and it can be done. You just have to uh, be reasonable with your expectations. And there's probably a few other videos I could record. I can't think of any topics off the top of my head, but so I might do three, maybe two or three or four more videos about solar generators. We'll see how it goes. So that's going to be it for this video. I hope it was of some help to you, and I hope you did enjoy it. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.